Today we're going to be building a forest full of fir trees. If you've seen my previous video on this topic, these trees are a little bit more involved, more detailed. I'm going to give you the recipe for making your own flock, show you how to get that nice needle detail, and give you a few mass production tips here. So follow along, you too can build dozens, hundreds, or even thousands of your own fir trees in no time at all. Hey everyone, let's talk supplies here. 18 gauge copper wire. I'm going to use copper wire uh, because it's nice and soft. It's a lot easier to work with. It trims up nicely. It spins up really, really tight. We're going to use some sizal baling twine available from an agricultural dealership. I also have some static grass flock, light green. I've got some fine turf. I use earth color and I've got coarse turf. This is also light green. We're going to use this to make our flocking. Flat black spray paint and some spray adhesive. The color of this doesn't really matter. Make it a darker color, make it flat. This is actually the bonding agent for our flocking over top of the initial tree. So let's go over and look at the tools that we're gonna to use. You're gonna need a bench vise or a mocked up bench vise in this case. I've got uh, vise grips clamped to a piece of three quarter inch plywood clamped to my outdoor patio table. I like doing this outside because it can be a little bit of a messy prospect. Got scissors for trimming everything up. Linesman's pliers for shaping the top of the trunk. And I've got snippers for cutting everything off uh, and trimming off the bottom. You're also going to need a cordless drill with an adjustable chuck. All right, you guys, let's get some material cut up here. So I'm going to start off with a couple of different sizes of hardboard here. This is just scrap from fascia construction. Got a 14 inch chunk here, 10 inch chunk here with a line drawn dead center. And this is going to give us our armature length. So you're not going to need more than a couple of different armature lengths. You can adjust the height of your trees by how much size you actually put in the armature. So you're going to take the copper and line it up with that center line. And we're going to wrap it around like this, okay? Every time you go around, it's going to give you a couple of armatures. I'm just going to show you how to spin up a couple real quick here. I like to make sure I have lots on hand, so I will actually, you know, wrap around a good hundred times. Give me a couple hundred armatures. You can actually see here, this thing's pretty full. So that's the seven inch one off of our 14 inch. I'll do some of these as well. Um, sizal. So you're gonna take your sizal, comes out of the middle of the spool. For the seven inch, I like to go about three inches. And for the five inch, I'm gonna cut these off to about two inches in length. Now, effectively, this is gonna give you approximately a two and a half to three inch tree. This can give you anywhere from three and a half to a four and a half inch tall tree. So judge this step accordingly to the height of the tree that you want. All right, so let's spin up a couple of big ones here. For the longer trees, what I'm gonna take is one and a half uh, strands of sizal per armature. So uh, if you wanna get right carried away and treat this like an assembly line, this works pretty well. I'm gonna pull one strand of sizal apart. You're separating all that out like that. And I'm gonna lay that right there on the table. I'll do another one here real quick. I'll actually likely do 10 of the, well, when I do it, I do 10 at a time, but for the video here, we'll just do a couple of these, okay? So there's two full ones. We're gonna take a separate one. We're gonna spread that all out, get rid of any knots that are in there. And uh, you got a thick piece there, we'll throw that out. We go half and we go half. So there's enough tree material. Like I said, I'll do 10 like that. And then I'll just get into this mode here, pinch this down, okay? So what we're doing with the vice grips is you wanna pinch down a loop like this, okay? You've got that loop, you're gonna turn it 90 degrees and you're gonna squeeze it like that, okay? So you're gonna pull those apart. You want it to be nice and tight up against those jaws. And take your material, slip it in there, fold the wire over the top and twist the end up like this, okay? Kind of pull all the wire tight. So that's what we're doing here. So it's kind of pinching that sizal. You've already pre-spread it. So it should come apart nice and easy like this. And we're doing the bigger tree. So we want this to be a little fuller. So if you watch the last fir tree video, I didn't get quite as carried away with this step, but we're making fuller trees here. So 
Um, all the stuff that was done on the west side of the pass, so the west side of the Continental Divide on the layout, is done to this uh, style. Uh, just gives you a nice full tree. The trees further east into Alberta, they're a little more scrubby. They don't have to be quite so full, so you don't have to take as much time, but these ones here, take your time, get this spread out nice and evenly, but you want it fairly dense. You see I got this thick spot here. I'm just gonna pull that out. Now this is another reason why you don't have to make a pile of different armature lengths, because when you pull that material out, it's obviously gonna shorten the tree because you've got less material once you bunch it all back up again. So everything's good. We're nice and tight up against there. Take our drill and we're gonna spin. Now again, we don't wanna break the end off here, okay? We want that loop left like that because we're gonna take and trim it like this. So you've got the strand of the wire up like this. You're gonna go right up against the top of the sisal and just cut one leg of that loop off, flip it 90, and cut the other leg of the loop off like that. I also cut the bottom off there so it's pointy so it'll sit into some styrofoam, okay? So you should be left with one leg of that loop up there. You're gonna take your linesman's pliers and you're going to straighten that out like that. Make sure that it's good. And that represents the top growth of the tree. Now, of course, if you're mass producing these things, I spin up say 50 to 100, and then I'll do the trimming part on that 50 to the 100, and then I'll go and do this part, the 50 to 100. So it works pretty well if you treat this like an assembly line. You could probably knock off anywhere between, I can get about 20 trees an hour if you uh, take into account the entire process. Uh, from start to finish, 50 trees takes me about two and a half hours. So anyway, there you go. That is what I call a master. This can go in the bucket and then we'll be on to the state uh, we'll be on to the trimming stage. So I've got a hundred in the bucket here all ready to rock and roll. They've been trimmed up and I've got the ends all pinched off with the linesman's pliers. It's time to trim these things down, and get them ready for paint. So this is where I would suggest you look at photos. Trees are not perfect triangles like you see in the commercial models. So look at some pictures and establish a style that you like. And it's just a simple matter of trimming like this. I like to get nice and tight up against that uh, copper sticking out the top. It's gonna help accentuate that new growth look that we're going for. And I just rotate around like this and trim them down. So my trees tend to kind of angle out and then come more straight towards the edges like this. But like I said, consult photos, come up with your own style, whatever you think looks best. When I'm happy with the shape of my trees, I set them into styrofoam blocks. These blocks will hold 10 smaller trees, but for the bigger ones, I'll just go with seven, four on one side, three on the other offset, so I can get good paint coverage and good flocking coverage. I'm gonna do up all 100 trees, and then we're on to the painting and flocking stage. All right, so the flocking I use on my trees consists of my fine turf and the static grass flock from here. And I'll also throw in uh, various bags of different colors. You can go light green, you can go medium green of the two mil or four mil, depending on how uh, pronounced you want the needle effect on your trees. So all you're gonna do is I've got a five gallon Tupperware container or plastic bin here. I just mix it in there. So a good ratio, two of these, and one of the static grass flocks. And like I said, if you want to uh, change your tones a little bit, you just go get a bag of the two mil, the four mil, different colors, and you can make this look any way you want it to. One thing I like to do is I'm gonna use a sifter to apply this. That's gonna make it nice and even. So once you've poured in your static grass flock, you wanna make sure that it gets all mixed up nicely, of course. Now, this stuff can bunch up in the uh, tub here, so sometimes it's best to go in, mix it up by hand like this, and then take and sift it all together, and that's gonna give you a nice smooth blend. All right, so what I find works best for painting is I zap them at 45 degrees, I turn 90 another, and then I'll make four passes at four different angles. Make sure you get a good coverage with the paint because this is acting as your bonding agent for the flocking material.
And then we're going to take the sifter full of our flocking, drop this into the bucket, liberally apply. You're going to turn it over 180 and liberally apply to the other side. Tap it all off. And there's your first coat of flocking. Once you've got paint and flock on your entire batch of trees, you can go directly to the next step, and that's just adding a little accent to the tips of the branches. So what we're going to use for that is some Woodland Scenics coarse turf, okay? So I'll take one of these, dump it into a five gallon pail. Again, that's going to help you retain any excess material. I like to use a sifter for this as well, just a medium grade sifter. You don't want the coarsest of the coarse turf to fall onto your tree. You kind of want medium coarse turf to fall onto your tree. So all you're going to do for this step is take some spray glue, a little goes a long way, just a gentle mist on the outside like this, and you're just going to sift on some of this nice light color. Okay, this is a matter of taste as well, how much you put on. I don't get too carried away because I'm modeling more of the fall, but what this represents is new growth on that tree, and it's also going to really bring out the three-dimensional quality here. Before these things are ready for the layout, one thing that I like to do, if possible, is let them sit outside for a day or two to off-gas. Before that spray glue and that paint sets up, these things can give off a pretty good smell. And there you go, a forest full of fir trees. Now, if you want a little variety, I'll put a link on the right-hand side to my video on making birch slash aspen trees. Those ones are piles and piles of fun. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. If you like what you see, by all means, poke the like button, subscribe if you feel up to it, and we'll see you in the next video.